people do not believe in themselves because they feel what their what's what their thoughts or what their belief is is not correct they have to look inward within them is what you're thinking correct do you think your idea can deliver do you think you can do it and once you do that that's the first step change your mindset from it can't be done to it can be done and keep trying until it's done friends welcome to a new episode of the professional lounge with dr solomon today i am joined by a truly special guest from nigeria amal hassan is the ceo of outsource global africa's largest bpo company in a harsh business environment especially for a woman she managed to get her startup to a grow up where she now employs over a thousand people in Nigeria. 50% of them are women and 90% of them are university graduates. Her company received the Export Service Company of the Year 2019 and 2020 in Nigeria. She's also the recipient of the Tech Awards Most Innovative Company in Nigeria. She was selected among only 16 women to be part of the Fortune US State Department Global Women Mentoring Partnership. Amal was selected by the US Embassy in Nigeria as a Nigerian star. Amal Hassan, welcome on the Professional Lounge. Thank you very much, Suleiman. Thank you very much for having me. I am beyond excited to have you on the show, Amal. Your story is something that I don't know what to say. Your company failed four times yeah. <laughs> until you get it on its feet. You had to change cities three times. While you are a mother of four kids, you had two kids while in university. I mean, all the odds are against you. And now, fast forward, you have the largest company in Africa for yeah. outsourcing process. How did this happen? Thank you very much. I'm really humbled by this. Um, so I started my first career with an IT training center mm. in northern part of Nigeria called mm. Kano. Uh, it's an IT training center where we teach MCSE, Oracle, Comptia, all the high-end tra IT training courses. And after a while, we trained a lot of IT professionals. And I realized that I'm not changing their lives, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we've trained, they come into the center, they train with us, they go back into mm -hmm. the labor market without a job. So one thing you must know, uh, Dr. Suleiman, is that Nigeria has a very high rate of unemployment. Uh, it's going at the rate of 30% uh, at the moment. So they go back to the labor market without a job. And I started researching on what I could do to create employment for those people and our people in general. I, I looked at India, I looked at a few countries about what they have done about creation of employment and what kind of business I could go into. Mm -hmm. I started India and realized that business process outsourcing provides millions of jobs to Indians. At the time that I was researching, it provided 2.2 million jobs. And I looked at the parameters for outsourcing. We have very good English speaking people in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. very good. And yes. We graduate a million graduates with different skill sets in Nigeria. We have the right infrastructure. We have better time zone than India. And I said, why not Nigeria? And I moved towards establishing the company. It took me eight years, like you have mentioned, to start the company. I started it four times and failed before I went live. June 2016. And just to explain what BPO is, uh, business process outsourcing is a process where companies outsource a segment of their business for countries that are less developed, where labor is very is, is relatively cheaper, just to focus on their core business and increase revenue and also reduce costs. So, and that's, that's where we are. Within four years of operations, we have moved from customer service, we started with customer service and telemarketing uh, with an American client. We are given America, American accent. And then we moved into other services. We moved into legal services where we take lawyers 
in Nigeria and they work under senior lawyers in the US to solve actual cases. We are now doing accounting as a service. We take accountants in Nigeria, junior accountants in Nigeria, and they work under senior accountants in the US to solve the financial operations of the company. We started doing software development as a service, uh, IT support services. Our model, we are focused, our focus is to reduce cost and increase revenue for our clients and whatever skill set you can you require we can find the right skill sets from a million graduates with different skill sets in nigeria to to uh, to provide for you and that's what we are doing so we started growing from uh for the first year we grew to 170 and we kept on growing and today we are 1004 people 50% women. We try to establish the company according to international standard, mm -hmm. from the establishment of the company to the infrastructure, to the processes that we're putting in place. We've all done that according to international standard and with the highest of standard. So our clients are happy, they're growing. A lot of them are growing at the rate of 25%. And, you know, we're here today. Help me understand this, Amal. Yeah. Your company failed four times. Yeah. Yeah. It's just mind blowing. Many people after first or second will stop, not to mention after the third time, we yeah. will just go to our cognitive bias and say, oh, three is the charm. It's a message from God that this should not work. What kept you motivated and how did you handle the doubts? There was never a time I thought of giving up right it was mm -hmm. not about me it was not about how difficult it is when i first started in Kano, where i was from i i, I was it was i was part I, I started it in a government building there was a change of government and and we had to all move from that building and we, i had to move to another city to start all over again at the time that i was moving i told myself the moment i start this business is going to change a lot of lives it do, it's going to create a lot of employment it wasn't about making money or, or, you know, yes, of course, I know it's the kind of business that will bring uh, a lot of money, but my focus is actually, how do I make an impact? How do I create employment? How many people's lives will change because of this business? And because of that, I always tell myself, it just takes one person to believe in me. And once I go live, I'm going to show the world that we can deliver. And that is exactly what has happened. It's not about me. It's not about how difficult it is. Once I, I go live and we go live with one American client, then we'll be able to show the world that we can deliver. We have the right skill set. We have the right processes. We have everything. So the second time when it happened again, I got up and I started all over again. All I'm thinking once I fail is how do I start? How do I, how do I move to what's next? You know, and for me, the opposite is, 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 is actually what got me motivated. The opposite is that I work hard, I do my own part, I leave the rest to God. And I didn't feel it was a sign from God. I felt empowered by God's continue. The right structure whenever I fail and I just get up and I move towards it. And I know that once the right time comes, and I go live, it's going to change Nigeria. It's going to change a lot of women. I'm going to provide a lot of work for women and they're going to get their children to school. They're going to provide means of living for their families. Then it doesn't matter how difficult it is for me. I have to keep trying until I go live. And that's exactly what I've done. I kept trying and I kept until one day I went live with an American client. We started with just 10 cents. And here's the story. That client has hundreds of seats with us. We have other U.S. clients that have similar seats, providing different services to U.S. Now we have grown to other markets. We, we, we are now providing for UK, EU. We have now providing services for Japan. And of course, within Africa, we also have, have a client. We just signed up with a Middle Eastern client as well. Mm. Yeah. So it is your faith. It yes. is the country and the mission to change lives. The mission that kept to change. You, that kept you moving. That kept me moving, exactly. That kept me moving, yeah. This is something, Amal. Yeah. I know you are a mother of four. Yeah. And 
I wonder how you balanced this passion, this drive, this commitment, while yeah. having four kids and a husband yeah. and moving in different cities. Yeah. How, how did they react to this? And how yeah. you balance that? It's not easy. Uh, of course, it's very difficult to move your family from one location to the other. But starting a family, uh, I started at a very young age where I didn't even notice it was difficult. Because I started in my first year of college and I had my first, at the end of that first year of college, all my life, I feel like I've been married all my life. And it's like a part of me, <laughs> you know, to do the things that I want to do, to achieve the things that I want to achieve with my family. I have a very, very supportive husband. And in Nigeria, we have a lot of family support. I have my parents, my sisters, and my brothers. I, I have a lot of support, which, uh, which really contributed to the success of our businesses, you know, because of that support. But uh, of course, moving your kids from one, one primary school and one high school to the other, it's, uh, it's a lot asking from kids, especially the teenage ones. But uh, today they're all doing fine. <laughs> we really, uh, we feel blessed for that. Uh, my two, the first two, my first is a software engineer. She mm -hmm. studied actually in LSU. Louisiana State University, and she's now a software engineer. My second is really studying automotive engineering in a UK university, University of Huddersfield. And uh, the two are in high school, so we're still, we're, we're doing well, and we pray that we'll continue. You are a lady of faith, and I know that the society can be harsh on ladies of faith and judge them by appearance, and what are you doing here in business? You should be at home. How did you handle this? It's really there. Uh, like you rightly mentioned, that I'm a woman of faith. I try to do things according to the, my faith and my religion. And I have very high confidence that how I do my work, it's actually according to you know, some of the teachings of my faith. For instance, the bedrock of the company is built on honesty and integrity which is our highest selling point for the U.S. clients and other clients as well. And that honesty and integrity came from my faith, right? Uh, insisting on higher standards, whatever you do, make sure that you do it with the highest of standards. And that has, is also our second core value within outsource. This is what we recruit people. We have four core values, honesty and integrity, insisting on higher standard, making an impact, and constantly improve. That the social responsibility that I feel of changing lives also came from my faith, right? From my ability to see something that is wrong, to contribute towards good, to make an impact. And all that came from the way I live. It's not easy. I always tell myself, Amal is not about you. Yeah. It's not about you. Someone could look at me and say, oh, you're not doing Islam right. But I know I'm doing it right. I know I'm thriving towards doing it right. <laughs> and yes. I would be trying to do it right. I don't care. All I do is look up and rely on God to guide me to do it right. So I keep doing it. I keep applying it in my everyday work in, in terms of honesty and integrity, in terms of insisting on higher standard, in terms of changing our community and changing lives. I'm doing my own part. So it doesn't matter how harsh people are, you know, or what they say or what they do. It doesn't really matter. As long as I'm focused and I'm very clear that this is what I'm doing and what I'm doing is right, it doesn't, all that doesn't matter. So I always tell my mentees, uh, I'm mentoring some women coming up from the same northern Nigeria, and I always tell them, shake it up, shake it up. <laughs> it's not about that. And just move on. When you know, you know, when you're doing something right, you know in your heart that you are doing something right, right? Islam teaches us to, to love one another, irrespective of people's faith irrespective of people's religion. So what we do is within outsource, we have people from all sorts of religion. We accommodate everybody. As long as you have our four core values, we'll recruit you. Honesty and integrity goes across humanity. Insisting on higher standard goals and making an impact, 
goes across every human being, spiritual or not, you have to have that to live as a good person in the world. And once you have that goodness, we welcome you and we try to get you to strive towards being a better version of yourself. So for us, employment is not just an employee within our shows. It is the fact that when we bring you in, we also groom you to be the best version of yourself, to, to think of others before you think of yourself, to collectively grow the company, to collectively believe in the vision of the company, uh, of making Nigeria an outsourcing destination, of proving to the world that there is good in this country, not the bad that they see on the internet. So once you believe in that, then we are a family. We motivate people, we inspire people, the team leaders, for every 10 person, there's a team leader. For every 20, there's a supervisor. And that's how, you know, that the hierarchy goes. And for every team leader motivates their team, inspires their team. And that level of inspiration starts from the lowest of employee to the highest. And we recruit you based on those four core values. And you have to live by them within the organization. And we have zero tolerance for dishonesty because the entire company is built on honesty and integrity. You are building a sense of citizenship yes. yeah. inside your company and yeah. also outside of it. So people will have a vision that is <laughs> bigger than themselves. It is having Nigeria on the map in competition yeah. with big other countries, including yeah. India, Philippines yeah. and others. Yeah, and, and, and that's what we're trying to do. For our yes. clients, we are also looking at what value we create for them. On this note, people watching us, if you are enjoying my conversation with Amal and you would like to know more about her company and the impact she made on thousand people and more to come, look up her company at Outsource Global and the link for her business are included in the YouTube description below. It is not a secret that the infrastructure in many developing countries, I would say is not conducive to outsource business, especially with electricity outage, uh, internet temperamentality, and there's just a couple. Was that a concern for you that clients might think, well, why would I go with a company in a country with unstable infrastructure? And how did you manage this? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's a very good question. It, it, was, it was a concern in the beginning mm -hmm. when we did research on how to establish the business and mm -hmm. take our businesses from other outsourcing destinations to Nigeria. One of the things we looked at is how do we set it up according to international standard? Mm -hmm. How do we set it up to be the best excellent, to provide the best excellent service? Mm -hmm. And one of the things we did is we researched on the best technology. In terms of internet, we have redundancies at every point. We have about four fiber optics coming into each center. So there is redundancy at every stage where one internet fails, the other, it moves to the next. The same thing with power. We created our own power system. We call it an automated, uh, an automatic power system, which is the national grid plus generators and inverters. So meaning that we are not, we do not go off for one second. Right. So even if the power, the national grid goes down, the generators and inverters take over. And then, of course, water, we have our own bowhole and, and, and things like that. So we looked at all the different areas where we are at a disadvantage and we, we research on how do we get it to provide, how do we get the company to provide excellent service? And these are the things that we put in place. The computers are all imported, the infrastructure in terms of servers and switches are all imported from the US. And, uh, you know, uh, um, and, and, and we provide excellent services using the best technologies. We do not compromise on quality at every point, like I said, from the infrastructure to the technology, to the sitting arrangement, to the ergonomics, to the processes that we put in place, all are well thought through, you know, through that eight year of failure and redoing it. So for every time we fail, we look at what, why we failed and what we are going to add to it until we get to this center of excellence. I call it center of excellence, mm -hmm. where nothing really goes wrong. Power doesn't go off. Uh. In doesn't go off and we deliver we have processes in terms of our processes we have a, 
a rigorous system of delivery where we have scorecard ratings among our employees and we deliver according to our uh, clients' uh, uh, KPIs and we try to deliver over and above that KPI. So we are able to pass the hurdle. Mm -hmm. It's a high capital intensive uh -huh. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. um, you know, uh, process. Yes. But by the time you put it, because of low cost of labor, we're able to beat the prices of all the other international destinations because our cost of labor is mm. very cheap is lower than any other outsourcing destination so mm -hmm. that helps us make up yeah. yeah and that brings me to a question about the cost having five different fiber optics is not cheap even if the cost of living is low that still the income would not be supportive of having this structure from the get-go how did you manage the yeah. initial cost it's the major one of the major reasons for starting over and over and over again is a cost right it's a high capital intensive project and you have to have high investment to be able to deliver it according to international standard but we are able to bootstrap and we're able to get the money to, uh, and establish this company, uh, establish this uh, infrastructure in, in accordance with that international standard. And once you pass the initial set of costs, then the cost, because labor cost is very, very low, then you are able to make a very good margin uh, and we are able to deliver, you know, grow the company within our, our, our income. And, and, and to this day, this is how we managed. This is how we managed. Wow. We have initial investors who invested in the company. Yeah. We're able to, to, uh, to, to grow the company. Uh, and, and we're able to get to a point where we go live. And once we went live, you know, the rest is history. We're still, history. we're still, we're still, we haven't done series A, series B or series C. We're still at the bootstrapping stage where we will get to a certain stage before you know mm -hmm. we, can, we can start looking at such expansion. Yeah, who helped you craft this strategy and this vision for your company? Yeah, so in the initial stage, uh, we 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 sign up a partnership with an American consultant, a company called Avacent, mm -hmm. and uh, they they did a complete research on how to set up the company according to international standards. So they came up with a blueprint on how to do it and how to do it very, very well. And that blueprint is what we took, including the pricing, the technology, how much it would cost us to establish the company and moving towards the processes. And then, you know, the first initial process of establishing it. And then we kept on our team. We have a very good team. Uh, so once we get to, before go live, we, we recruited from the best call centers around the world, or experts around the world, and we recruited them to come and work for us because of course we've, we've researched on the business we've never done this before so we have to take the best from elsewhere to be able to deliver according to international standards so we recruited from philippines we recruited from canada and we have a team that is constantly thinking we have the best team uh, i must say that the outsource team are really really good in the sense that they do all the work and I do a lot of the talking and they, 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 they actually, we keep on reviewing our system. We keep on reviewing a strategy. We keep on uh, tweaking it and we are, we are going to keep doing research and we're going to keep tweaking it, you know, as we introduce other services. Right now we're doing legal accounting, IT support, software development, secretarial service, AI as a service um accounting as a service did i see accounting medical records and we are introducing other services like i said a lot of people ask me this question that how come you're not focused on one industry mm -hmm. our focus is reducing cost and increasing revenue once we study a company once we look at a company and we understand the process that they need us to take away from them that will allow them to reduce that labor cost we will look at the 1 million graduates that graduate in Nigeria every year and we take a skill set that matches their requirement. And there was never a time we look at a company that we don't have the right skill sets to mm -hmm. match them. So for us, we are an extension of those companies. We are an extension of their businesses. And all we do is focus on them. That team that is working for you is dedicated to you. We do not share that. 
and that team is dedicated to you and is focused on your business, is focused on growing that business, and it will keep growing as you grow. And that's that's our model. And it's 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 where we feel blessed that it has uh, it is going well. During the pandemic, we learned something very new that we don't have to expand the company by brick and mortar. We can actually expand with uh, people working from home. And we divided the team into two and half of the team, everybody on data that is not non-voice services is working from home. And everybody on voice services is, is working from, from, from the centers and it's working well. So we tested our BCP plan and we we're able to grow by more than 25% during the pandemic because of that. This is so inspiring. Yeah. Amal, I can talk to you for hours, but unfortunately, this wonderful conversation is coming to an end. What would be final few words you would like to leave our audience knowing about how to move from striving to thriving? Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Once you believe in yourself and you see the road very, very clearly, structure and move and keep moving and once you fail get up and keep going until you get it right so believe in yourself how can people believe in themselves have you thought about this before yes i have you mm. have to look inwards mm. once you are confident mm. usually people do not believe in themselves because they feel what their what's what their thoughts or what their belief is is not correct they have to look inward within them. Is what you're thinking correct? Do you think your idea can deliver? Do you think you can do it? And once you do that, that's the first step. Change your mindset from it can't be done to it can be done and keep trying until it's done. You know, mm -hmm. I always tell people, I have never, I've said it over and over again, that I've never thought of giving up. What if I give up? What if I listen to all the people that told me there is no way an American client can outsource a segment of its business to, or to a Nigerian company? There is no way. A lot of people told me that. But I, I, kept, on saying, <laughs> I kept on saying I would do my best and I would, uh, all, all it takes is for one person to believe. And I will show them. And I did show them. <laughs> now here we are today. So it all starts from the fact that I believed that it can be done. I saw the research, I read everything. It can be done. <laughs> and then I believed and I kept going and I relied 100% on God to make it happen. And it happened. <laughs> your faith and your belief in yourself made your dream true. Yes. What a pleasure to have you on the professional lounge, Amal. Thank you. It's really an honor to be here. Thank you very much. People watching us, if you are enjoying my conversation with Amal, please share the link with others who will benefit from her motivation and her insight. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click this little bell button so that you can get notification about new episodes. And until we meet next time, keep safe, keep motivated, keep resilient, and see you in the next episode of The Professional Lounge with Dr. Solomon. Thank you. 